Could we all stand to our feet one more time, everyone? Let's just stand one more time. Man, it's just so awesome to be here today. It's so awesome to see what God's doing here in our church. It's really a privilege to be able to stand here before you all today and to preach God's word. And I'm really excited. I'm so excited about the season that we are in. I'm so excited about what God is doing. How many know God's doing something in this season right now? Can you feel that? Can you feel what God's doing? God is doing something special in this season. And it's the kind of season where if you want it, you can just step into it. You can be part of it. What God's doing, how God's speaking, how God's moving. It's open to every one of us here right now. Everyone. So what I want us to do right now, just for a moment, is if every one of us here could just take a moment. Just if you can just begin to speak to the Lord right now and ask God to speak to you now. Ask God to speak to you right now. Ask God, God, if you've got a word for me, open my heart. Help me hear it, Lord God. Speak to me now. Speak to me now. Hallelujah, oh God. Come, oh God. Speak to me, Lord God. Speak to me today, God. Lord, let me hear whatever it is you want me to hear, God. Lord, whatever it is you have on your heart for me, God, here I am, Lord. Speak to me today. Speak to me today, Lord. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. You can get your Bibles if you can. Just stay standing for just one minute longer. Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to read this three verses from Genesis chapter 12. If you don't have your Bible, they'll put it on the screen. We're going to read the scripture together. This is what it says. The Lord had said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on the earth will be blessed through you. That's a heavy promise. Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now and we ask you to take control, Lord. Holy Spirit, you know we can't do this without you. You are welcome to come and move and speak however you want to speak, Holy Spirit. Have your way today, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. You can be seated today. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I wanted to call this message, The Promise of Posterity. But it just sounds weird. The word posterity. Does anyone even know what that word means? It's one of those old, old-fashioned words. Posterity means the people who will exist in the future. That's what posterity means. Or all future generations of people. And I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. The promise of posterity. But because it sounds a bit weird, I decided instead to speak on the promise of legacy. The promise of legacy. Posterity is still about all the people who will exist in the future. But legacy, legacy is about what you're going to leave behind for the people coming after you. Because someone's coming after you. I don't mean chasing after you. I mean someone's coming up behind you. Somebody's next. Who's next after you? Which generation is going to inherit what comes from your life? We've been in the Promise Life series. And I believe that one of those promises to those who walk with God, one of those promises for those who are faithful to God is a legacy. A legacy for someone after you to inherit every promise that we've been that we're going to be talking about throughout the promised life series is not only a promise for you and for me individually but it's also a promise for those who come after you whether that be your children whether that be people you work with or influence or lead whether that be 
generations after you, that you build something today that another generation inherits. Those who walk with God will have a legacy. When God called Abraham to step out of his father's house, he was calling him to embark on an obedience adventure. An obedience adventure. Until the time that we just read, when God appeared to Abraham and called him out of his father's house, until then, Abraham had grown, had developed in the place where his father had stopped. His father, Terah, had gone as far as he could go, or maybe he'd gone as far as he was willing to go. But when God appeared to Abraham, God appeared to Abraham to say to him, I'm not calling you to stay where your father stopped. I'm calling you to go further. Someone say, go further. God called Abraham out of his father's house to go further than his father had gone. God didn't tell Abraham where this place was. And God didn't tell Abraham what this place looked like. All God told Abraham about this place was that he was, a, that is that he, all God gave him was a promise. A promise. In verses 1 to 3, he says, read it again. Leave your native country. Leave your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. Then he promises him, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who treat you with contempt and all the families on the earth will be blessed through you. He didn't tell Abraham where he was going to take him, but he gave him a promise. And then again, in Genesis chapter 13, God did it again. God spoke to Abraham and said, look, Abraham, as far as you can see in every direction, north and south, east and west, I'm giving you all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants, those coming after you as a permanent possession. And I will give you so many descendants that uh, that like the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. Go and walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. And then even again, in chapter 15, verse 5, God speaks to Abraham again and says to Abraham, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. God was saying to Abraham this, if you stay faithful to me, if you stay on the obedience adventure that I am taking you on, you will leave a legacy for generations to come. When God spoke to Abraham and said, look and see if you can count the stars. That's how many descendants I'm going to give you. He was saying to Abraham, what I'm going to do through you, Abraham, is so great that you won't even be able to see the fullness of it in your lifetime. I, as you stay faithful, Abraham, to me, as you walk in obedience to me, I'm going to bless you and give you a legacy that will go beyond your days. Even when you have died, Abraham, your legacy will continue to go on if you stay faithful to me. See, many, a, a lot of us in, in, in this day and age, a lot of people today are thinking about being famous or achieving something great in the here and the now. And I believe that there are great things God wants us to achieve in the here and the now. But who's coming after you? Who 
will inherit what you build? Who will come and take what you've got to another level? I believe that there is a promise to anyone who is obedient to God, faithful to God. That as you stay faithful to him, he will give you a legacy. You will leave a legacy for people after you to inherit. Can someone say amen? For the first part of this year, we were learning a lot, talking a lot about killing giants. How many giant killers are in the house today? Killing giants. And really what that's about, it's about killing the negative. Killing those negative things that stand in our way. Overcoming those negative things, whether it be inner attitudes, whether it be inner stuff, struggles that a person may have, attitudes, changes that need to happen. Killing those negative things so that they no longer stand in our way. But I believe as we move into this series, the Promised Life series, it's time for our energies to turn from not only killing the negative, but claiming the positive positive claiming the positive you see that's a tricky thing for some people because some of us spend a lot of time focusing on the negative things we want to get rid of the negative things about us the negative things we see in ourselves the negative things when we look in the mirror and trying to get rid of that well, whatever that thing may be but how many of us are actually really putting energy, not just into killing something negative, but claiming what God has for us? See, the Killing Giants series is about killing those things so they can lie behind us. They can be behind us. But the Promised Life series is about claiming the things that lie ahead. Because how many know that God has more for you? That God has something for you? That there is a purpose for your life? There are promises ahead of you. God has only just got started with you. The best is yet to come come and whatever was behind you is not the climax you're not on the downward slope of your life when you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ there is no anti-climax God takes us from strength to strength to strength and as you overcome the stuff that bound you and held you and pulled you back as you beat that stuff there is a freedom that begins to rise in your spirit to take a hold of the best that is yet to come see killing giants is about destroying it's about destroying those evil things destroying those dark things but as we move forward we need to move from destruction to construction what are you building what are you building for your family what are you building for your community what are you building for someone who will inherit after you we don't really know all about what God has for us. We don't fully know what it looks like. But we have a promise. We have a promise. We have a promise. We have promises. Promises. See, patience is such a huge part of this. Patience is such a big part of this. In Hebrews 12, it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that easily trips us up. That's the giants. And let us run with endurance or patience the race that God has set before us. Just a few weeks ago, for the very first time, I ran a half marathon. 13.1 miles. Couldn't have done it without my mate over there. Thank you very much, Mr. Gilding. 13.1 miles. It was painful. Has anyone ever run a marathon or a half marathon before? Let wave your hand. Let me say, oh, you've done that? Come on now, bro. Anyone else? Yes, what's up, bro? hurts it hurts 
My legs were on fire. There's not much of them, but they were burning. Oh my gosh. It was the Buxton Marathon, which my friend helpfully told me after the marathon is one of the hardest ones in the country. It starts on an incline and just keeps going up. It's like literally how much, and then it turns a corner and you can see the distance and it's going up the whole way. Like what's up with that? Oh, it hurt. It hurt. But you know what was one of the things that stood out to me? It's going to sound really like spiritual and stuff and whatever, but, but God's real, guys. God's real. At the beginning of the race, there was no starter gun. There was no countdown. Three, two, one. Yeah! Whatever. There was none of that. We're standing there, and suddenly everyone's running. Oh, <laughs> it was the most unspectacular, undramatic start to a 13-mile marathon ever. It was so unspectacular. But you know what? For some of us, we need to know the race has begun. This thing has started. It started the pressing forward, the taking a hold of what God has for us, the best that is yet to come. We ain't sitting around here waiting for it to happen. It started. It started. It started already. So maybe you're like me right now. Maybe you're the one of the ones that's like, oh, 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 have we started? And you know what? If that's you, start running. Just get on it. That's what I had to do. I had to get on it. I was to get trampled over by people behind me. Just start running. Okay, all right, okay. And as we were running, I felt like the Lord began to speak to me. I actually really did. I know it sounds spiritual, but it's true. I felt like as I was running, I felt like the Lord started saying to me, what you're about to experience is a symbol of the next season in your ministry. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. <laughs> and it was all uphill. And I tried to appease myself. See, I'm not a very fast runner. So I, I take my mind off the fact that it's fast. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go at my pace. I'm going to go at my pace, which was fine at first. And you had all these like super athletes all like all the way up there already. I'm like, bye. Because I'm running my race. See, I'm not trying to compete with anyone. I'm not trying to beat anybody. I want to run my race. God has given me a race and I want to cross my finish line. I'm sure sometimes people walked past me, but anyway, I just kept going and I kept going and I kept going and my legs started to hurt. I'm so grateful I had a friend with me. You see, what, sorry to put you on the spot, dude, but you just did it right. He, he, he didn't run next to me. He didn't run behind me. He ran just in front. He ran just in front. And every now and then he'd turn around and say, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm just about. <laughs> but the fact that he was just ahead of me was giving me something to anchor to. And I felt like the Lord was speaking to me. And he was saying, that's like the Holy Spirit. That's like the Holy Spirit. Just follow the Holy Spirit. Just keep going and follow the Holy Spirit. Don't stop. Sometimes he'd run ahead because I'd be like, dude, what's happening around that corner? Is this hill going to end? 
and he'd run up to the top, look to where he could see the corner, and then he'd run back and say, you're almost there, you're almost there. And that's like the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to tell us of things to come. And I'm telling you today, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you that you got to keep going because something's around the corner. Something's around the corner. No matter how hard it gets, something's around the corner. There is a promise for you. The best is yet to come. No matter how much has been behind you, just think of how far God's already brought you. If he brought you that far, will he stop right there if you brought you that far is he going to give up halfway you're going to keep going until you've run the race it's an obedience adventure every step is obey 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 and all he had was the promise all he had was the promise as i ran i kept thinking about two things i kept thinking that i'm gonna cross that line i'm gonna cross that line i'm gonna cross that finish line i'm gonna cross that finish line and i kept thinking about raising the finances i'm raising finances i'm raising finances for united we can i'm raising finances I'm raising finances for United We Can. Just keep going. 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 At every step, obey, 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 obey. Focusing on the promise that is ahead of you. There are at least two legacies that matter in any one person's life. The legacy that you receive and the legacy that you leave behind. And in the next, what, nine minutes or so, I want to just bring across the legacy that Abraham received and the legacy that Abraham left behind. See, Abraham received a legacy. He was in his father's house. And he was blessed in his father's house. Sometimes you sometimes don't realize how good we've got it because someone say Amen. He was blessed in his father's house. But look at this verse, Genesis 11, 31. One day, Terah took his son Abraham, the daughter-in-law, his daughter-in-law Sarai, and his grandson Lot, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. Listen to this. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. Abraham's father was headed for Canaan, but settled at Haran. The legacy that Abraham received was from a man who'd gone so far. Now, I don't want to judge Abraham's dad, because that's really easy to do, isn't it? It's really easy to just judge Terah, to say, ah, well, there you go. He was too lazy. He was meant to go to Canaan, but he stopped in Haran because he was too lazy to go the whole way. Or maybe we could judge him and say, oh, he was a coward. That's why. Maybe he got scared. Maybe Abraham's father saw the giants and decided he didn't want any part of it. So he just stayed and settled in Haran. Or maybe, yeah, Terah was half-hearted. That's what he was. He was a half-hearted guy. And that's why he never finished anything, much less the journey of his life. See, it's really, really easy to come up with all kinds of explanations as to why Terah never went all the way to Canaan and settled in Haran. But you know, the truth is, the Bible doesn't tell us why. The Bible doesn't tell us why he settled in Haran. It doesn't say, this is why Abraham's dad stopped going. And sometimes we can be so judgmental. So judgmental, even about our own fathers or mothers or even leaders. Sometimes we can look and see how far they went or see what they did and wonder why they didn't do more. We can get angry at them for not doing more. Why didn't he do more? 
Why didn't she do more? Why didn't they go further? But the same thing with Abraham's dad. I don't know the full story. I don't know why Terah didn't go the whole way to Canaan. Do we always know the full story? I'm not making excuses for anybody, but they had their journey just as much as we have ours. And they had their things to face. They had their battles and their struggles, the same way that we have our battles and our struggles. And as easy as it could be for me to stand here now and preach a message about why Terah didn't go all the way to Canaan, the truth is I just don't know. And there are some things about the legacy we receive, there's some things about what was done before us that we just don't know. We just don't know the full story. We just don't fully understand it. I know in my story, there are things I just don't fully understand. And you know what? I may never fully understand some of the things in my story. I can be angry, and that's, that's actually okay. Because you feel whatever you feel. It's, it, you feel what you feel. But at the same time, do I know the full story? Do you know that hurt people hurt people? Sometimes those who cause damage were damaged themselves and didn't know how to move beyond their own damage. So we don't know the full story. I don't know the full story. What I can do is give them the same mercy as God gave to me. What I can do is the same way that God has been so merciful to me Helping me where I go wrong. Helping me where I fall short. In the same way, the least I can do is be as merciful to the ones who came before me. Can someone say amen? You see, Abraham's starting point was the point where his father stopped. You can't change the past, but you can shape the future. The past is not in our hands, but the future. We can make choices about the future. Whatever legacy you may have received, whatever cards you may have got dealt, you can make the decision as to how you move forward from here. What legacy do you want to leave? What do you want to build for those who come after you? Do you want to take it to another level? Or are you content to stay where it stopped? See, Abraham could have said to God, I don't want to go any further, God. I'm going to stay right here. And some of us in our lives find ourselves stopping right there. We never learn how to move on from where it all stopped. We camp there, build our lives there, carrying the emotions of that for the rest of our lives. But when God came to Abraham and said, said, I am calling you on an obedience adventure. You've got to come out from where you are and begin to move forward and run your race looking towards the promise I have for you. Abraham said, yes, I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to park here. I'm not going to just lie down here and say, this is it for the rest of my life. This is how I am. Abraham said, I'm not going to be just a victim. I'm not going to be just someone who's a product of something I believe there's a promise for my life and therefore with my eyes on the promise I'm going to get up out of this place and I'm going to move forward and I'm going to keep going until I cross the finish line because if God may be a promise God will keep his promise if I do not give up can someone say amen and the funny thing is in that decision Abraham decided to leave a better legacy. What was the legacy that Abraham left behind? Can say it in one word. Faith. 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 You see, 
God promised, we saw it, God promised to make Abraham a father of many nations. That's a heavy promise. You will be a father of many nations. But Abraham and his wife, at this point, weren't even able to have children. And Abraham is there like, okay, I'm going to be the father of many nations, but we haven't even been able to have one child yet. In Genesis chapter 12, Abraham was 75 years old. When, in Genesis chapter 21, he did have Isaac, he was 100. That's an old daddy. 25 years. 25 years of running his race. 25 years of waiting, of trying, of staying on the obedience adventure. Year after year after year after year after year. God made him a promise and he decided to go after the promise. But he had to wait one year, two years, three years, five years, eight years, eleven years kept going. What if he gave up on year 24? But he didn't give up. He kept going. Yes, he made some bad choices along the way. But at the end of the day, those 25 years ended up being a quarter century of faith. A quarter century of faith. Listen to how the Apostle Paul summed it up. Romans chapter 4. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. And we are all certain to receive it. Whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. If we have faith like Abraham's. For Abraham is the father of all who believe. That is what the scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said, to him that's how many descendants you will have and Abraham's faith did not weaken even though at about 100 years of age he figured his body was as good as dead and so was Sarah's womb but Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise in fact his faith grew stronger and in this he brought glory to God he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises and because of Abraham's faith God counted him as righteous and when God counted him as righteous it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit it was recorded for our benefit too assuring us that God will count us as righteous if we believe in him the one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead Abraham stayed obedient because he had faith that God would keep his promise. And here today, how many nations are we here? How many nations are we here? We have English people, Scottish people, Irish people, and Welsh people, Dutch people, Ghanaian people. Nigerian people, French people. Oh my gosh, we got, who else have we got here? Have I ever seen that? Polish people, come on now. Jamaican people, who else have we got here? We got Montserratians, what? You got Kenyan people, who else have we got over here? Have I missed anybody out? What, Irish? Turkish people, come on now. The Turks are in the house. Bulgarian, we got Bulgarian people. We got Indian people. We got so many nationalities right here. Why? Because Abraham believed that one day he would be the father of many nations. And he never gave up.
Vic Church Manchester. You can come and take the, well, not the keyboard because you don't play the keys. You can take the guitar. You can try the keyboard if you want. That'd be fun. No? All right. As we move into this season that we're in, the race has started. You and I, we're going to need faith. We're going to need faith. Faith. That no matter how hard it gets or how long it takes, faith. That even if it feels that we're running uphill for like a long time, faith. That God who made the promise will keep his promise. The promise of his presence, the promise of purpose, the promise that even beyond our life, there'll be a legacy for our children and our children's children. Let's stand to our feet right now in this place.